It's time for more custom cards. And this time around, the task was to make anti-aggro cards. Wanna shut down aggro? Well, hopefully the cards in this video will help you do that. Like this one, Minzrium, the controller from Little Sunflora. It's a three mana, three, three for Priest with a crazy battle cry. If all enemy minions have three or less attack, force them to attack each other. So we've got a sort of mass hysteria effect on a stick here, but uh, it's only gonna be for enemy minions. So if you get this down early enough in the game, very likely to help you reset your opponent's board and uh, really well-timed, given that we just got the nerf to um, Wild Paw Noel for Rogue going from four attack to three attack. Suddenly Wild Paw Noel fits into Minzrium here with this three attack threshold. But I like this threshold because this becomes a really powerful tool potentially in the early game, but might often fall off in the late game. As soon as your opponent starts to get any kind of mid game threat, this just becomes a three threes. There's this real risk reward here. Now that can create some problems with like power spikes because if they do hit this on three, it's really insane and kind of bad other times. But I think we need these sort of powerful effects if you're gonna keep really hyper aggressive decks in check. And for the record, depending on the shapes of the minions, this doesn't always necessarily result in a full board clear. Uh, you know, if there's like one, three vicious slither spears that haven't been buffed yet, this might still create some awkwardness where things are left behind. And even then the existence of this threat becomes useful because it might slow down your opponent, force them to be a little bit inefficient to play around something that is good removal that early in the game. Moving on here, we have a pretty cool card, the Totem Shield from Grumpster. This is a three mana zero four weapon. I love the idea of just like picking up a totem and using it as a shield. That's awesome, or multiple totems as the case may be. This one reads, while you control the totem, your hero is immune. When a friendly totem dies, this loses one durability. So the idea here is like, look, man, I'm gonna force you to attack through my totems. Even if they don't have taunt, you're gonna have to deal with these various totems if uh, if you want to hit me, which could be a great way to leverage. Otherwise, sometimes, you know, not exciting plays with totems uh, into some actual defensive utility. Now, I will say for this one, I don't know that it needs this durability condition. Uh, the way we see totems, at least today, uh, they're not particularly hard to get through or, you know, they're not super common. So it's maybe like one per turn, you know, and the opponent's not going to be that disrupted having to attack through a totem in some cases they might want to anyway. So this could maybe be an effect that just doesn't lose durability, like for the rest of the game. You know, obviously those kind of long-term effects can be frustrating, but it's just totems. As soon as good totems were printed, that would become an issue. So maybe this is just a hedge against a world where there are actually good, useful totems. The opponent is happy to play anyway, maybe really high health totals. Stuff like uh, Eyesore, you know, is a little bit harder to push through, for instance, than maybe just a hero power totem. So probably some balance considerations there, but if this were plopped into Hearthstone today, I'm not sure you would need it to lose durability, or if you did, you might even be able to pump this durability way up to make sure that it's actually a useful repeatable effect. This might be something the opponent kind of works through really quickly, maybe even feels worse than uh, just like a bulwark of Azanoth, for instance, uh, if you compare those two. But from a flavor standpoint, I love this card. <laughs> I always wanted like a tank shaman spec in World of Warcraft anyway, so picking up totems using my shields, sign me up. All right, next up, I like this one a lot. Sam Fam Designer gives us crawl space here. This is a three mana thing. It's not a spell or a minion. I think the way I'm envisioning this is like you'd play it and it would just be dormant on board. This kind of looks like the portal style cards we've seen a few times, but the text is the important part. Only minions across from this can attack your hero and it lasts three turns. So that also makes it feel a little bit like an objective uh, we've seen in Ultrak Valley. So maybe this is literally just an objective and you, the opponent has to have a minion in the middle of the board. Maybe it's a portal on board. They have to have a minion in the middle of the board. With this wording, we have seen some cases where if it's uh, a split set of minions, like if there were two minions, they could both use the crawl space. But I'll let you guys sort out the uh, the specific mechanics. Feel free to <laughs> to theorize in the comments or maybe Sam Fam will stop by and, and uh, share their, their intentions. But Almost regardless of any of that, I like this flavor a lot. Like the only way you're getting through to attack my hero is by going through this crawl space. And it's such a tight fit that only one minion at a time can actually get through there. So this could be a really cool way to limit the amount of damage your opponent can do per turn. 
for three turns. Now, that's kind of like other cards we've seen before, things like Evasion, for instance, for Rogue, the secret where they hit once and then they're denied damage. If we're talking about a minion specific world, that's kind of like an evasion three times in a row. Obviously, though, there are ways to work around that, like spells from hand would still be able to hit you in the face. You're not limited uh, taking damage from hand. Or if your opponent was like able to kill off minions and slide new stuff into that spot, they could still attack through uh, the crawl space as well. So some really interesting, complicated uh, ways to work around this one. But I like this kind of... Uh, visual and board based limitation it's a really cool flavor hit for me so i again the specifics on this one are a little up in the air everybody can sort those out but the idea here seems like an a plus hit all right next up here is sir dath rohan from magic milk this is a six mana five six with taunt divine shield and rush so quite a powerful trio there it also reads if your opponent has less cards in hand than you this costs three less so if indeed they do have fewer cards then this is going to be a three mana five six with taunt divine shield and rush and obviously that's a really good card at three mana so this is a way to say look if you're going to dump your hand as an aggro deck then i'm going to punish that if i have sir dathro hand in hand and i'm going to get this really nice swingy three drop that also leaves behind this really big taunt body so you got to be careful playing out your resources at first i thought this was like way too good but then i started thinking like well man i don't know rogues are playing wild pawn holes for free practically in the early game i don't think sir datherhead's completely out of line costing three mana for you know a somewhat unreliable uh condition here i actually think this would be pretty in line with modern day hearthstone it, even though at first glance it looks pretty scary i think sir datherhead is a printable card believe it or not before we move on i'd like to talk about our sponsor for this video it's keeps yeah did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35 years old and the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. With Keeps, you can get treated right from home. You just have to go to a doctor's office to get a prescription. But with Keeps, you can talk to one online and they'll send your medication right to your door, making it super easy and convenient. So if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, it's time to do something about it. For a limited time, you can go to Keeps.com slash Regis or check out that link down there in the description for 50% off your first order. All right, next up here is Gilnan Wrath from Arty, a three mana dual class spell for Druid and Warrior. I always love when you guys make dual class combinations that don't currently exist. I feel like there's a lot of fun combos. This one's very fitting for these classes. It reads gain attack and armor equal to the damage you took on your opponent's turn. You can only attack minions this turn. So if you took a big hit last turn because your opponent got out to a really quick punishing start, buffed up some vicious slither spears, then you can follow up with Gilnean Wrath and gain all of that life back. So I like the way this creates some real friction for your opponents. Like, oh God, if I hit them really hard and I don't have like a lethal push, then Gilnean Wrath could really punish me extra. So do I weave in that predation right now for that extra three damage? Maybe I need to hold that for later. There's all these sorts of calculations that start to happen for your opponent when they know that a card like this one exists, being able to punish. And then the attack upside here, although it can't go face because that would be super duper crazy, scary, swingy, uh, still gives the ability to maybe chip through a minion while also gaining all of that life back. And of course, the attack armor combo here is perfect for both uh, Warrior and Druid. So I like cards like this. There were a lot of people who printed different variations of this, like negate or regain the damage that you took on the previous turn. This one felt like the most elegant solution uh, for that design across a bunch of combinations, but there were a lot of pretty solid designs that all tackled this idea. So this is certainly something coming up in a lot of people's minds and feels like the kind of card that might be appropriate because tons of people want to see this apparently so now we have nordrasil the world tree from jockey ronson a five mana zero twelve for druid i love crazy unusual stat lines like this it's got taunt and it's got lifesteal and it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers so essentially this is a big old tree that the opponent has to chop through with um minions most likely there are of course other random destroy effects or universal destroy effects twisting others etc they could deal with this but very often i think you're intending to use this uh, against minion boards i got to get the axes out and start swinging to cut this thing down 
Now, of course, it has life seal with zero attack. That does nothing, but that's why I actually like this card a lot because Druid, as a class, is really good about buffing their minions on board. They have all these like wide board token buff cards. And Nordrasil takes that and pushes it into a different direction. Usually those are almost always used with some sort of aggressive game plan where you're building out wild wide boards and trying to savage or and so on your opponent to death. I like the idea of using those wide board buffs potentially to support and enable a more defensive game plan as well. So cards like Nordrasil would be a way to do that. You start giving this uh, plus two attack, for instance, this not only becomes a big body to push through, but it also becomes a way to regain some life as well. As they're chopping through that tree, you're restoring a little bit of life along the way. And of course, you can still buff the health of this as well with things like Pride's Fury, for instance. You can start stacking on like this one minion, trying to make it big enough that it alone gets you through an aggro game plan. And then even at a base level, this 12 health is still a lot for the opponent to push through potentially. Like it's kind of like a heal 12 in its own right in many cases. So I think this uh, does some different things for Druid, kind of capitalizes on a lot of the designs we know and love for Druid, but takes them in a new direction, which seems really fun. All right, next up is a pretty cool card. It's Man Aggregation Master Dicey from Kurgen Heart. It's a three mana two two legendary for Druid. It's got to choose one, summon a one for Manatee with Taunt or summon it and return this to your hand. So you have a choice here. You can get a two two on board with the one four. So you can get the like Taunt body to slow people down and then have the two two maybe to take like a return trade, trade into a two health thing later if you need a little bit more immediate tempo or you could choose more of the value game plan and keep returning this minion to hand to get multiple one fours turn after turn, creating this kind of repetitive wall of manatees that your opponent has to push through. And I like that exchange because some matchups, it'll be much better to have that 2-2 two -two and just, uh, you know, take that trade early. You don't want to spend three mana on this again. Other times you might need to fill your curve a little bit and getting it back in hand is going to be really awesome. But I'll be honest with you, the main reason I included this card in the video, it is not the art as many of you will surmise. It is the name Manatee. I don't know how we haven't had a Manatee show up in Druid in Hearthstone. We use mana. They love animals. We've had even ocean themed and water themed expansions. And manatees, I think, live in fresh water, but it's a mana tea. It, there, there has to be a water themed card about gaining mana for Druid that is a mana tea. This doesn't even really play on that, honestly. It has nothing really to do with mana, but I don't care. It's a cool card. And we just, we have to see a mana tea. I don't understand how it's taken this long. Blizzard, get on the mana tea problem stat. Moving on is another druid card. I didn't mean to do so many in a row here, but this is uh, Thorns from Spikefire, a two mana spell. Nature spell reads your hero has one attack during your opponent's turn this game. So this is a design I often see toyed around with a lot in custom cards. Basically the ability to do damage to your opponent's minions merely by existing. So as if your weapon were unsheathed, but in this case you just have that one attack during the opponent's turn. So in essence, any minion that hits your face takes one damage. And I guess in theory, you know, that may like clear off one ones, for instance, or chip down the health of more smaller to medium sized things so that you can finish them off with whatever other spell in the future, like Starfall, their board or whatever. And of course, if you play multiples of these, that starts to stack up. You could get two thorns and have plus two attack. And then suddenly you're, you're hitting bigger things, even copy these as Druid can get up to even higher totals. And uh, yeah, I thought this was just a really simple, elegant way to do this. Many of the other times I've seen it, the effects are like too big. It's like, oh, they've got a five attack weapon and now every minion hitting it is gonna take five damage. That just always feels like too big and too strong. This one felt like the more realistic, subtle way to do it with one attack at a time. Can still stack up, but uh, nonetheless, felt more realistic. Now, would it be as effective? No, of course not, but is it more balanced? Yeah, perhaps a little bit. It, it definitely looks and sounds like a real card because Thorn style effects like that have existed across the ages in various RPGs. You get a thorn effect, people hit you, they take damage. Perfect flavor for Druid. Nice, elegant, simple design here, and uh, probably does help at least a little bit against certain brands of aggro, particularly those with one health minions. Uh, thorns does a lot of work. So I guess, again, very fitting for the uh, nerf to uh, Demon Hunter's Vanguard going down to one health this week. Thorns would suddenly murder that card, whereas in the past uh, it would not have, although would have been decent against the 1-1 one -one tokens either way. And then finally here we have the Resolute Protector from Dr. Quilbert J. Fish. Uh, this one's 
pretty crazy. This one probably needs a tweak, but I really like the design. It's a four mana, two, three taunt with death rattle go dormant. And then after your hero takes damage, this awakens. So basically your opponent has this uh, constant battle where they have to kill a protector, then hit you, then kill a protector and then hit you and then kill a protector and then hit you. And uh, obviously it's it's very disruptive to any minion based strategy because they have to keep whacking into the protector. And uh, that's a really good effect, I think. It's basically very interruptive to the opponent's game plan, saves you a ton of health, probably removes a lot of minions along the way. So I do like that idea of this kind of repetitive problem that keeps popping up and resurrecting and like, that's a cool design. I just think you might need to do something like pull the stats down on this one so that it's either much easier to push through or alternatively, maybe it doesn't deal as much damage on the return swing, even if this say had like zero attack or at the very least one attack so that it wasn't like killing everything because it's too health. It's going to start chipping away so much that it's going to really wipe out your opponent's board as a on top of also disrupting their attacks. I think it kind of needs to be disruptive, but maybe not also so punishing from a damage standpoint to feel fair at all. So, you know, maybe make this like a one two, for instance, so that still kind of gets in the way. It's still annoying. Uh, but not completely shutting down their game plan. I would feel better about that for the Resolute Protector if it were me. Do you guys think there is even a health or damage standpoint where this feels okay? Or will this always just feel like a problem card? Curious to hear people's thoughts on that one. So there you go, that wraps it up for this custom card video. Thanks as always for submitting tons of cool designs. Uh, if you wanna submit for the next custom card video, there's a link down there in the description. That'll give you all the details on submitting and the theme for the next video. So look forward to seeing those once again. Share your thoughts, comments on these cards down below. Thanks for watching and until next time, game on.